Hello. Hello. We can oh, hear you, Sir Pali. Sorry. Um, okay, I, I think I've got a problem because I have. All right, just a minute, please. Okay. Hello. Um, Sorry, I I got a bit confused on my phone. So welcome everyone. Um, I am Sepali uh, from the Asia Pacific Women's Watch and uh, Women and Media Collective in Sri Lanka. Uh, we are very happy to uh, be able to uh, have this conversation with you on the at this AP caucus uh, I think we have uh, okay there's another Luz is not here yet so I think the main thing for us today is to see where the uh, uh, agreed conclusions section is the discussions are on the agreed conclusions. Um, so I what we do understand is that we still have, as usual, the, the contestations uh, on the uh, sticky words, phrases, particularly in relation to women's uh, autonomy, women's rights uh, and equality, particularly again in relation to sexual and reproductive health, uh, in relation to sexuality, and the family, etc. And I think those for those of us who have been uh, following the CSW, either attending physically or uh, online, uh, in previous years, we always find that every single time there are particular uh, states that do uh, are most uncomfortable in framing women uh, uh, within the uh, rights, uh, you know, uh, access. Sorry, uh, human rights framework. So, um, I have any of you all been also following these uh, discussions up to now? Um, so, Sipali, I'm happy to give a quick update as to um, where we are at the moment. If, um, thank you for starting this and apologies for coming in late. Um, so, this is information that's come in um, both from New York and from my government meeting. So, Australia is meeting with the government on a daily basis around language and uh, suggestions. Um, some of it's good, some of it's bad. Let's not be real on that. Um, so what's happened is yesterday was a holiday. So mon sorry, Monday was a, a public holiday in the state. So there was no meetings on that day. We're at the time in the conference in, in CSW where the document's too long, the negotiations are too slow, and there's too much controversy around um, each issue. So that's pretty normal for this time of the, um, of the you know, this period of time within um, the conference. So where we have, what's happening is because of the added complication of the negotiations taking place online, things are actually moving a lot slower and a lot differently. So there was a suggestion yesterday that uh, states, uh, that, that uh, countries or groups of countries coalesce around specific issues. This was agreed by some countries and other countries weren't too pleased with that because some felt it should be an open and transparent negotiation process. Others felt like the language and the sticky issues might move quicker if they're moving in small groups. So my understanding from today is that this morning, the small groups met. Now, some of the small groups that I understand um, have coalesced are around sexual and reproductive health, women, peace and security, COVID, civil society, climate, violence against women and harmful practices, the multiple forms of discrimination, um, the, the language on specifically the language on gender. 
So these groupings are taking place. So my understanding is that, for example, the climate is led by CARICOM, which is the Caribbean, um, PIFS, which is the Pacific Island Forum States, and Brazil. So this is quite a really good grouping to carry forward language on climate change, as obviously that's including a lot of the small nation states um, in there. We um, are not sure what's going to happen around sexual and reproductive health rights, and I'll go back a little bit to Beijing plus 25 and the uh, regional process there, where the US had a particular red line. Now, the red line means that they cannot agree the document if this particular language is in it, and their red line was on sexual and reproductive health rights. Because there has been a change in government since um, the SCAP meeting in, 2000, uh, in 2019, um, there's a question mark about what will happen with the US in this space um, and how the US will be performing in this space, given that they're now under the, the new presidential election. Um, because of the... Yeah, so one of the strategies that is used in the negotiation of the document, and I think, Sapali, you know a lot more about this than I do, um, is that some states will just keep disagreeing and disagreeing and not allowing certain language to go through until we get to the very end of the negotiating process. And they will then say, well, we'll just fall back on old language. We'll just fall back on um, pre-agreed language. And um, that becomes a compromise point. So there are um, a few states who are doing that at this point. So we have to wait and see how that plays out in the bigger scheme of things. Um, the other thing that came out of the, the discussion was the issue of COVID. While it's actually um, in the document, it's also a sort of overall context piece. And so um, the there's a particular document that they're falling under. And if you give me two minutes, I'll just find my notes on what that is. Um, it's the General Assembly's omnibus strategy. So they're going to be, this must be a new, I, I don't know what this is. If anyone out there knows what the General Assembly's omnibus strategy on COVID is, it would be useful to get a summary of it um, because that's going to be a framing for some of the discussions around COVID within the document. Um, There's yeah. going to be a press conference on Friday, um, and I understand there's a statement, a civil society statement that will be shared at that. I haven't seen that at this point. Um, and I think that's it, Sapali. Yeah, I think also, uh, please, uh, everyone, please do come in with uh, whatever experiences or uh, perspectives you all have. But uh, Carol, you had also earlier mentioned that there have been some groups uh, who have been hacking into uh, parallel sessions, particularly uh, where the uh, where the discussion has been on women's sexuality and sexual rights. Um, so though that this is something very new because we've never had a CSW online before. And uh, when we do have it physically, we are, uh, I think, able to manage uh, the uh, discussions better. But this is something new, and we don't have maybe the technological uh, know-how on how to uh, manage it online. But do please come in if you all have any such experiences of the third of this, and also uh, the, the the way if you know in your countries or how your countries are engaging with the uh, the the conclusion uh, discussion process. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that we usually ask when we do have this physically uh, in New York is how many of you have been to the CSW before. And how many of you are coming in now afresh? And because we are online, it's uh, really um, it's tough to figure out. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a question in the box from Melinda. Um, you can unmute. It's a small enough group for you to unmute and ask your question if you would like to and to um, share your face. It's It's been <laughs> such a long time we've been looking at screens. It's nice to see faces. Um, Belinda's asking, is there any information specific to this region, insight sticking point updates specific to countries within the Asia Pacific region? Um, the answer to that is I'm not quite sure. I'm sure there will be some certainly within the climate change um, area. We know that Australia and New Zealand are fairly progressive on sexual and reproductive health rights. Um, my understanding is, is that um, Australia works alongside New Zealand with the Mountains Group and they will be working um, on the issue of um, gender-based violence and um, harmful practices, harmful cultural practices. Um, the main sticking points that we've had have been common across many CSWs, which is the issue of family versus families, um, comprehensive sexual education, um, the multiple forms of discrimination, uh, the in integration of um, SOGI language, SOGI language, um, and I can't think of the pushback generally on strengthening a human rights framework. Does that answer your question, Belinda? Sorry, I'm just trying to unmute. Um, it does. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyone else questions or is anyone else working with their governments or bringing in, um, you know, having language thinking or um, talking at the national level with their governments? Yeah, mm. hello. I'm Anu from Estonia. Yeah. Uh, we are working with, with the Estonian government. Estonia is very small country and uh, it's easy to to make lobby and advocate and uh, we we have a group of women and uh, we networking widely on national level to push issues forward for example now we are updating victims uh, support act to to be more victim friendly and it's it's very useful to have allies in government who does yeah. Estonia generally work with in the UN? Which grouping does it work with? Do you know? Uh, we uh, echo, uh, I I am participating uh, participating uh, with uh, this uh, status committee both here, and it was uh, through uh, through Wave Network, which is Violence Against uh, Women Europe Network. And uh, Wave is ECOSOC member. Yeah. Uh, in Estonia, uh, I, I'm not so sure that uh, we have members. And for example, last year, there were so many people who wanted to be members of, um, uh, to be delegates uh, through Wave network. And then I asked uh, me to put to, uh, to team with the Associated Country Women of the World, where we have been members. So it was possible to, if, if your group is not ECOSOC member, it's uh, also possible to find partners somewhere. So I really appreciate all this international work and cooperation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. I think what I found interesting in this, um... Uh, a good conclusion that are uh, under discussion now is an extensive, extensive discussion on uh, women's work and unpaid care work. And I think uh, this is something that well, when we look back at the Beijing Platform for Action 25, 26 years ago, was not a critical issue, but it is now recognized and uh, the good conclusions that uh, address the issue also linking it with the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, Goal 5 uh, uh, of uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which uh, is on gender, uh, gender equality. So there is a very good, I think quite a comprehensive discussion. And I, I think also for us, when we look at uh, women's work and unpaid care work, 
one of the dilemmas we have is the, uh, that that uh, segment of labor, women's labor, is not still recognized as labor in mainstream labor statistics and definitions. So while the the text at the moment is not addressing that um, specifically, but it is addressing the, the issue of uh, creating uh, the a uh, 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 conducive environment which recognizes this as uh, something that affects or places women in positions where they may not be able to engage in uh, decision making processes outside of their homes uh, and also bringing in the issues of uh, introducing across the board uh, by countries uh, uh, um, interventions such as paternity leave or parental leave and availability of services. Because I think the issue that we need to address is not only providing creatures but also changing the status quo of why women are the ones who are end up with uh, with 90% of uh, unpaid care work. So that's something that I I don't know whether the countries will look at it in that way, but certainly it's advocating, the uh, conclusions are advocating for across the board, um, le legislative, regulatory, and uh, service provision that will enable both women and men to engage uh, better uh, in sharing uh, unpaid care work and, uh, uh, you know, have the services that are required. So that's something I found quite interesting in this uh, draft of the conclusion. I mean, it's very long, as you said, Carol, it's 60 pages. So, you know, at the end of it, you, you are rather befouled, but hopefully it will get tighter and more yeah I, more I, have the I have a feeling there's an actual page limit on some of these agreed i think it's about 40 you know i think there's a page limit on the actual conclusions my feeling is as well um care is definitely one of the smaller groupings that has gone off to be to have the language worked on so it's going to be interesting to see how that develops and they're at the um, the double letter stage of the document. So that means they're in the operative part of the document. So those who don't know, you've got the preamble, the operative section, and then you've got the, yes, we're going to do what we're going to say, said we're just going to do section, which is the, you know, confirmation of moving forward. Um, so they're in that part. Uh, and I'm not getting a sense, I'm getting a sense that the states themselves are overwhelmed by both the size and the speed that's uh, that this is happening because it's suddenly in a virtual space. Um, and I also understand that the, um, the process of um, negotiation is, even if you've got a delegation of 10 people in the room, there is only one person or maximum two people on the Zoom link. So that extra work and that extra frustration, I think, is, is, is overwhelming everyone. Um, and I know certainly from the discussions that I'm having with my government, and we have pretty much daily briefings on it, is that the overnight, because of our day-night time frame, um, what's coming out through the day where they're getting in the morning and we're, they're sharing in the morning, but that's not an ideal situation either because you know there's none of that um, continuity and flow. And so if we think of the platform for action and strengthening the national, uh, our national mechanisms, this is not actually helping our national mechanism perform in these spaces, you know, this kind of. So it's gonna be interesting to have a debrief. Um, uh, and we are pushing our government to have a debrief about these processes and how they work and how we can better integrate into them moving forward. Um, so that was just a, a comment on the processes. Yeah. I see this uh, and there's a message from because I was, we were hoping that Pam Raj could, could uh, 
would be uh, joining us as well, but there seems to be a message because uh, India has, uh, Zarin uh, has said that she wants to get more information from India, but what Pam had told us was that uh, they have been, there has been discussions with the government and or with the Indian government and also with UN women uh, on uh, uh, contributing to the to, to language. And uh, she has written in the chat box where Zarin has included here uh, some um, understanding, some of the issues that getting um yeah yeah i think it's always very interesting when we come to these kinds of international meetings to see we we usually we have these different countries uh relating to our individual countries on trade or on security or you know, uh, uh, how much of a grant they're going to give or donor support, etc. But when we have meetings like the CSW, where countries have to come into a place where the discussion has to be framed within the BPFA, uh, that uh, there is so much pushback. And 25, 26 years on, we have the same issues that are troubling. So I think one of the things that we should be able we, we could do and we do it not only because of the csw but right through the year is how should we um strengthen our own uh, uh network to address these kinds of obstacles that are being put in relation to realizing women's rights and gender equality particularly women's sexuality i think that's a that's seem to be a cornerstone of the trouble, a troubling cornerstone, shall I say, uh, that um, some countries just will not, uh, um, I, I would like to say move with the time, but uh, they, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of resistance to actually putting this in, on the table and saying, yes, we agree that uh, women's sexuality, sexual reproductive health and rights, uh, discussing the different forms of family is okay because it still isn't. It seems when we come here and we find the countries actually pulling back, saying there's only one form of family, for example, that is a heterosexual family. And we have right. to say, you know, the reality is conflict in our region, in the Asia Pacific region, has left so many single uh, mothers or uh, women headed households. And we still don't want to say that these are all families where there is no man present or where there is no woman present and there's a man who is responsible for the children. So it's still, yes, the CSW, I think, is a point where we come together to discuss this. But I think also, what do we do from this year to the next CSW? How are we actually going to on the ground and also in the terms of, the, uh, for, uh, for example, I'm from Sri Lanka, South Asia. In the South Asia subregion, in the Pacific region, in East Asia, Southeast Asia, how do we, how better, how can we better our uh, advocacy tools? And uh, I think that's something that we are constantly grappling with. I agree with that, Sipali, and, and maybe how can we better engage these online forums or these online spaces to do some of that work? Um, it would be really interesting to to hear from those in this meeting and I don't think it, it's not a large meeting there's there's enough for, picked for you to engage in a conversation it's not that it's a, an unwieldy room we could knock our mics off and have introduce yourself and give your input um, it would be interesting to know how we can better use these spaces moving forward um, and do we want to do we want to set up regular regional meetings in this way or just to speak about where we are in processes or you know quarterly meetings i don't know um they're not on the table at the moment i'm sure we could arrange them <laughs> i have to ask with ngo csw but um you know how can we uh how do we want to 
move forward? Is this useful? Is this space useful to you? Are you? Why are you coming into this space? I would love to know why you're coming into this space and whether you're finding this a useful forum. Um, and if not, what would you like to see? So let's put that out there. Anyone? Yeah, hi, I'm Zareen. I belong hi, Zareen. to India and I am part of the Sir Optimist International uh, Club in Bangalore. We have about 15 in India. And uh, you, as you know, Sir Optimist International is worldwide. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we work with women and children, with girls specifically. So this is CSW has, uh, when I first came, you know, it was like a whammy. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. And this is so much, it's nice in a way because uh, you can choose, you're sitting at home, you're not running from one building to the other, or one room to the other. But sometimes I'm seeing the new people who are coming in because they don't have to travel now and they can access uh, CSW. They don't know where they should go. And you know, Asia Pacific, the Caucasus, they don't understand terminology. What is Caucasus? What is language? What okay. is, uh, you know, pushbacks? when they come into the system, when they come into meetings, all these terminologies are being used and they don't know what is going on. So I think over the year, if we have sessions where these, of course, Sir Optimist is helping us. They did this year, we had webinars and stuff like that, but you're trying to fit in everything in one uh, meeting before the CSW and that gets confusing. Okay. So understanding what is a caucus, what are you do, what do you do as a caucus, who all are involved in the Asia Pacific caucus would be so much nicer and relates to our countries part of that area of that caucus. So uh, it would be what you suggested would be really nice to have a you know, quarterly or half yearly even to start with. Uh, okay, some... Zarina, can I, can I sort of ask a question? Um, and this was something that we did in Australia. We've just had a two day conference on CSW in the second week of CSW. But the day before we ran a full day of training for anybody who, from Australia who was going to CSW. So it had a particular, wow. we focused in on the, the, you know, the Australian issues and things like that. Now, normally at CSW um, and Sipali is one of the regional trainers for this. Um, we have a training sessions at CSW for first timers uh, for those who are coming for the first time uh, or for those who want to be brought up to date with what's happening specifically in their region um, what the key issues are for their region so um, I'm wondering about maybe if we did online training beforehand that is an NGO CSW style training so Pali, what do you think about this that that we switch yeah, maybe there's an opportunity to do that online at before CSW, where we can go into these things like what the caucus is and what, what, what you know, caucus means meeting. Asia Pacific yeah. caucus means meeting of people from the Asia Pacific. Um, who's yeah. in that caucus? Anybody who wants to come into that, you know, anybody who wants to come in can come in. This yeah. is a free space, it's an information space. And to make it more welcoming in that way so that the terminology doesn't get in the way when we get, to, do, do you think that would be something, Zareen, what are you thinking? Oh, Sipali. Yeah, yeah. I, and I encouraged, so Pali, who did you ask? I'm sorry. Either, either. Well, both of you can decide. Wait, sorry. Go ahead, Sepali. I could follow your guide. So uh, the yeah, because when we um, when when it's a physical meeting, primarily a physical meeting, then the training takes place to for people to arrive. Uh, who have registered and got the funding and have traveled to New York. Uh, the trainings are done at the beginning of the CSW. Uh, there are uh, two, two days per uh, region. So Asia Pacific would be one, the East Asia, etc. But now that we have moved on to online, I think there is much more scope to start the process of uh, knowledge building because, I mean, that we can actually have a better re, uh, outreach prior to, and it does not have to be the week before the CSW, it can be uh, several weeks or several months before, to explain what the CSW is about and what kind of processes are happening. Or, you know, what, the, what, what are the expectations of the states that attend the CSW? 
why is the csw there and then what is the role and what is the space that is available for non governmental organizations or civil society organizations now the asia pacific caucus is really a place where we can come in uh, and raise the issues that you know we don't have enough information on this but we went to this lecture this discussion this is what happened how do we proceed from here which are the governments that can we go with our governments how do we lobby our own government and and for me uh, from sri lanka i can tell you we we uh, sri lankan government very very rarely participates in any uh, any meaningful way i would say at the csw but there are members from the government the ministry of women's affairs who would have attended if it was a physical meeting and made their uh, statements within the uh, government processes so but the but civil society also has the uh, space to link up with government and work with their respective government if the, those governments uh, permit them to quite often governments uh, i think more governments are actually bringing uh, civil society or ngo women representatives want to their delegations now than maybe 15 years ago but in countries like ours it rarely happens so we have to do any kind of lobbying any kind of discussion we have to know ahead before we leave or before the csw who in the government is involved who is looking at uh, agreed conclusions and i think india has a, a strong group that does engage with government you know in your in different parts of the country so uh, australia does i think uh, new zealand does uh, uh japan does uh, so philippines so there is, there are different levels and sometimes depending on the political context of our respective countries there can be more engagement of civil society and all it so but i think the primary thing is for people to know what the processes are and how we as non government groups uh representative uh, how can we get our voices heard or can we actually uh, make a, a lobby create a lobby either as asia pacific or country wise or south asia wise or you know pacific wise so those are things that we would work at and we would learn from each other mm good idea yeah that's uh, we have that the group you were mentioning where pam pam rajput is on it and the un women representative from india is also there and uh, they select people to be delegates with the government very few i think just two or something like that and they come here but uh, so we do have that thing but the i am hoping that next year there will be if we are going live next year csw that they have a hybrid i don't know if that's going to happen but you know if they want more participation of women to come in i think that would this is a possibility i i think that would be really nice what do you think carol would you think that would happen Sipadi? well i think we should ask for it yeah, yeah. I, i don't think we should sit and wait to see if it's going to happen i think we should ask great. for it great <laughs> great let's ask for it that's something that you know people want to do we should actually look at that um and and ask for that because my my feeling i'm in australia as i said and we have mm. still got a travel ban we can't travel out of our countries um they're thinking about opening up the travel to new zealand which okay. is you know, we are the second last bus stop in the um, world <laughs> and new zealand sort of the last bus stop of the world so they're letting us travel that way back but only on certain conditions um i don't know what's the situation will be honestly next year uh, for csw I don't know whether um this um I I I my feeling is and this is what I'm going to try and investigate with my government that it would be interesting if you could find from your own governments how this process has worked for them in the negotiation of a document because yeah. if they um you know do they want to go virtual or are they wanting to get back into the room and really do this work Uh, so i i get a feeling that the governments are not happy with the on the governmental side that they're not happy with the negotiation processes the way they are but they're putting up with them as as they are 
the opportunity to link in to CSW through UN Web TV, et cetera, et cetera, I think shouldn't be part of having a pass to go to CSW. I think that should be just allowed, which would allow more people access to you know what's happening on the official program now we know we know that that's the program and that's sort of pretty much worked on before we do a lot of work in country to impact on the language of the negotiations once the zero draft comes out and then we work through so a lot of that work happens later um but the other part of going to csw is uh, you know, and this is the exciting part is the setting of the agenda for the forward movement, which is where the parallel sessions and the side events really take place. And that's where you learn what's going on in the world. That's where you hear the voices and, and the stories of those who who are impacted by particular issues. And really, that's where you're starting to see the way that things are moving forward. And so I, I find that the online uh, forum has allowed us to do that but what's missing is the corridor conversations of coming together Correct. and making Correct. sense of what it is so um you know part of my frustration of not being in csw is we can't have those corridor discussions either on the language which is something that i particularly focus on and and work on um but also about learning what else is going on in the world and making those networks and linkages and having those convers those amazing conversations that you don't normally have so i mm -hmm. I, I would I would like to personally see a hybrid. I think we should ask for a hybrid. I think we could, it would bring more people in. It would certainly bring a lot more um, younger women. I think we need training in the language and in the processes and in what it means. It's, you know, it's easy enough to do with the online platform. Um, why not? Um, it's whether, you know, we're meeting here today. What, what, do, what does everybody want? What, it's not just me. It's not just my voice. It's, uh... Yeah. Can I say something? This is Joyce. Yes, yeah. please do. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Joyce. Yeah. How yeah, are you? I'm just joined now. Yeah. But I also want to echo the feeling and the sharing of uh, Safali where she talked about, yes, information sharing, this platform, this platform to be a capacity building platform, this platform to your advocacy, uh, you know, platform. And also like the, the way forward, as you talked about, you know, if we can use this for all of us to kind of uh, come together, how often as we can, you know, to uh, uh, the language which we have to know, uh, to build the new young members to understand. Because I feel in Asia, there should have been a lot of organizations and from a, a, a different countries. But we are hardly few in the last meeting also in this meeting also. So this, if we can, you know, uh, bring all of them, most of them can come together here and share. Uh, especially even, I especially want to talk about the country uh, positions and the country discussion. Okay, this caucuses can be the space where we can, it's sometimes very difficult to approach our country governments, you know, what they are doing. I have no clue about what's going on in India. But uh, a delegation, and I would be really interested to do, meet with my other colleagues from India who would be able to kind of guide and what is, you know, uh, to build each other's capacity, understanding, to negotiate, to do advocacy, to share our in information. So this could be a very, very useful space from that point of view. And I also represent a faith-based organization. Faith-based organization such, uh, you know, crucial role to play in terms of, you know, culture and law or the policies, which are mostly, especially in other in Asia and in Asian countries, there are a lot of laws which are, you know, very, very anti-women. So how do we really advocate and in terms of bringing in that kind of long language and understanding in the document? What are the sticky areas in the document and how are we able to negotiate? How as, you know, as uh, uh, Asia uh, able to push? And climate is also a very key concern for uh, South Asia and South Asia groups. So how do we really make sure these uh, items are staying in the document because we are hearing it is not there. Family, related to family, as we talked about. So different understanding of family, LGBTIQ inclusiveness. How do we really do? No, so there are uh, uh, needs for our input and our advocacy and input. If we can do it together, I really look forward for this space, you know, and to learn together and join together with others. Uh, it will be very, very helpful, this space. That's what I feel. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, can, can I just ask um, Luz and Sepali and anybody else who's from APWW that's on this call about the processes of the, um, of the Asia Pacific caucuses prior to, um, well, 
in in the sort of early 2000s because I'm sure that there was um I seem to remember we had a language negotiation group as part of that. Luz, do you remember that or Sipali? Yeah, there was, I think, you know, the caucuses would uh, uh, have a draft of language of the, you know, we look at the draft and read conclusion. And then the, the respective caucuses would actually draft its own proposed language and that is shared with everybody who come and sometimes it's like 30, 40, 50 people attend the caucus, the Asia Pacific caucus, but we read it out to get, try and get as, uh, as far as possible consensus and then we would go to uh, lobby our respective governments with this piece of paper saying this is from the Asia Pacific caucus. And this is the kind of language that we would like to have, and these are the reasons, etc. But over the years, I think this is something that I think all of us who are involved in uh, this kind of uh, advocacy and uh, engagement with at the international level on women's rights and gender equality have to recognize that over the last decade at least, the the space for civil society. Uh, to engage directly with respective governments or the states that are uh, negotiating has become very much, very, very limited. In fact, it's really difficult now for us to go in with any piece of paper. We don't now, no longer do we do a draft of what we think uh, should be language. It's more or less, you know, individuals who may have some kind of uh, other group who might draft something and then try and see whether you can get access to whichever government, even if it's not your own respective government, but uh, government representative. So there has been a shift over the last decade, I think. No? Yeah, uh, that's got my understanding and, as well. I remember yeah. early meetings where I would be sitting at a sitting being shouted at by multiple people to put this language here and that language there and and you know the discussion was going on behind me as I was typing in this is because I came in <laughs> as a younger person and I could be bullied at that point <laughs> to do that um, and I still do that now but um, it, the, yeah the caucuses seem to have shifted in their role to a, a dip and, and I think part of that shift has been because the shift in process has changed. Now the zero draft is already starting to be worked on a month ahead of the meeting. So we're no longer, you know, we're, by the time we get to, to CSW as a caucus, it's almost too late to put in new language. That has to occur beforehand. Um, but I know that NGO CSW has a global advocacy group so I think what I might take from this caucus is um, a discussion with them on how that might work if we engage regionally into the global advocacy group and see how that maybe mm. call, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll bring that suggestion back to NGO CSW to see how that may work because I recognize there's a big frustration. Um, I, I, and I've just had a fabulous group of young women um, pushing for space and wanting to be taken, you know, I mean, I take it very seriously, but, um, you know, really feeling that um, the online has allowed them a bit more of a shield to be able to ask questions that they probably would have been overwhelmed or, because um, we are scary women. I mean, most of us who attend CSW and know what we're doing, you know, we're scary women and, you know, we've got a love. But if we weren't scary when we... Carol, if we weren't scary when we, we first went, went, that's right. After a few few years, we become pretty scary. We, well, I mean. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So it's a, you know, I think I'll I'll definitely go back with a few questions. Um, now, just for your information, I do not have your personal emails. All of this has gone through NGO CSW, so I will ask NGO CSW to um, assist in, in contacting you about the answers for this. Uh, Luz, you have a question, you have your hand up. Not so much a question, but, but, but the previous speaker triggered, um, some, the previous two speakers triggered a memory also that in our, and maybe this is something we can revive in our early years of 
the Asia Pacific Caucus, we had sub-regional meetings also in which we could talk about what the Asia Pacific Caucus was about. And we could, we could talk about, uh, do workshops on what is the language? How does it mean? How does it all work? No. So I'm wondering as we're moving out of this pandemic, which I am hoping we will be moving, maybe not 100%, but as we're moving out of this pandemic, will it be again an opportunity to have these kind of sub-regional meetings using now the, the internet and face-to-face -face when possible to bring in more women to understand. Because I remember in the beginning, it's very scary. It's very confusing and oh, yeah. you don't to engage in it. And how, how, can you make a, how can you make a contribution if you have no idea what's going on, right? Yeah. Um, so, so that if maybe we can go back to doing sub-regional meetings around the UN mm -hmm. uh, CSW process, using internet people and on the different modalities that are now available to us and and build up that capacity of women because many of us who started are aging out and we need to be able to continue this building the capacity of women as they come in so maybe it's if we can revive with the csw agree okay. Uh, Zareen has a comment. Shall I read yeah. it out? Oh, she's there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Zareen, you, do you want to read it or shall I read it for you? I'll read it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, There's a lot of noise <laughs> happening here. <laughs> <There's a lot laughs> I was just answering um, you on that, actually. Um, Yes, so the, the trainings that they do on CS, uh, uh, look, Asia Pacific Women's Watch has generally run a training every five years with the, along with the Beijing reviews. So we've normally done, um, that's, that, that's the you know, Asia Pacific Women's Watch organization has done re those regional trainings. But annually um, at CSW, NGO CSW um, has been running trainings at the session. And so that's what we were talking about earlier is maybe bringing those into an online version and delivering yeah. those um, on, online. And we can, um, so I think these are really good suggestions. One's the training and uh, the other is to run sub-regional meetings um, and to, to see how that, um, or, and then have a regional decision. The other one is to discuss with the global advocacy group around how can we link better with the voices of the region and bringing you know, that in. And I have to say, I was on the global advocacy group with NGO CSW and the timing of the meetings is a killer because for me, it was always midnight to 1.30 in the morning. Wow. And yeah, it's and um, or sometimes it was a two hour meeting from one o'clock to three o'clock. And this has been a major problem. I also want to put onto the um, table that a lot of the generation equality meetings were at those times as well. So we what we um, can try to do is find a way that works better in our time zone for everyone, um, because this is not a bad time for this region to have a meeting. And right. we can look at um, how we can maybe, you know, sh how we can work that. I think that's a, a conversation we have to have with NGO CSW and the Global Advocacy Group and then invite them to speak with us to find out what the art of the possible is. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Are there any last comments, any knowledge anyone would like to know that we haven't shared or... Um, this, this is the last scheduled caucus meeting for the, the program. Um, don't forget about the hybrid CSW. We're definitely asking for that. Okay, we're definitely asking for that. I would like to see that because it just makes life easier in yes. reporting back to everyone. And I think it keeps people in the loop. Um, if, um, yeah, there are no more um, caucus meetings scheduled in the program. 
what we could do if you wish is we can schedule one if you would like one please let us know and um we can schedule one for the end of the session uh, we, you have to let NGO CSW know so just drop them an email and say we want another Asia Pacific caucus and I'll get the information from them and we'll set it up uh, and then uh, and if we did that at the end of the week or if you want that to happen directly after CSW or if you want it to happen next week so we know a bit more about what's happened with the draft conclusions I'm very happy to arrange that and have a quick meeting on that so um, there's offers on the table. I'll take these suggestions that's forward. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, Carol, I think that's a good idea of having like after the um, the UN document, the, the Greek conclusions, what came out of it to be able to share back. And, and, and what was the behind the scene politics as, as much as you can get in this situation? Yeah. Because it, it was well, very useful. Yeah, I have to say that um, there's a small strategic group in Australia working with our government. It's been very, they've been great. Australia performs excellent internationally. It's nationally, they're not so good. Um, but you didn't hear that from me, even though it's recorded. <laughs> uh, no, they've been really good. And we are hoping to have a debrief with them about processes and the way that it's worked for them and the mission. So that also will give us an idea of some of those sticking points. Um, so if anybody out there is has that opportunity, it would be really good to hear how your um, discussions went as well. That would be great, yeah. Yeah. All right. So there's already people wanting to have something at the end of CSW. I'll talk to um, my feeling is next week when we know whether the conclusions have been agreed or not, because um, at this rate, it doesn't look like they might even finish the last read through mm -hmm. by Friday and it will go okay. on till late in the night. So um, if you either put it into the chat box or send an email to um, NGO CSW and I'll, I'm very happy to run that next week as a, a caucus and we can have a big feedback and a review and a, a, and a yeah. look over it. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, I thank, thank you. you very much for being with me for this hour, <laughs> this hour of power. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Carol, for everything. All of you. I think great inputs. Yes. Thank you all. And you. Um, we'll see you as we move forward in this process. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, thank everyone. you, thank you, bye. bye. Good night, good night bye. to you.